Madam Secretary, are you ready? Yes, I am. All right. It is 8.01, and I call the special meeting of Sunday, October 4th to order. First item on the agenda is opportunity for public comment. If any member of the gallery wishes to address the committee, um, raise your hand, not, not literally raise your hand, but hit the hand raise thing and we will call on you. Mr. Thrasher, go right ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I rise for just a couple of brief reasons. First off, I did want to mention that I have put in a, an application to be a part of the convention voting process committee. Uh, I would ask for the committee's support in this endeavor. Uh, I was hoping to address some of these issues from my position on the bylaws committee in this past term. Of course, other matters took precedence, uh, but I would very much like to be a part of the solutions uh, and implementing those solutions to uh, the challenges that we have with our voting on that committee. So again, I'd ask for your support. Uh, second and, and most important, I just wanted to say that it was an absolute pleasure to see you all in Minneapolis a few weeks ago. I think that in these interesting times we find ourselves in, I think we've all learned not to take for granted any moments of fellowship we're able to share together. And uh, I just wanted to say it really was a joy and a pleasure to see you all there. And uh, I hope that we're able to come together again in person soon. And uh, with that, I'll just say cheers to you all and uh, best wishes for a productive meeting. Thank you, Mr. Thrasher. Anybody else wish to address the committee? I don't see any other hands up. Going once, going twice. Um, Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Arliss. Um, I did put in chat the form I was asking attendees to sign, and I sent a message to Mr. Fishman. For some reason, the Google form is locking out people. If he could please correct that in the background so the gallery members could sign the form. <clears throat> Mr. Fishman, did you get that? Yes, is the form in the chat? Am I muted? Yes, sir, and I, I sent it to you privately in chat. Gotcha. I, right, I see the, the 8021. Got it. <coughs> All right, not seeing anyone else for public comment. I will close public comment and we'll move to housekeeping and the call of the roll. Madam Secretary, whenever you're ready. Okay, just one second. I'm pulling that up. Right, uh, Mr. Bishop Henchman is here. Mr. Molman? Here. Mr. Hagan? Here. And I am here, Ms. Epke? Here. Mr. Longstreth? Here. Mr. Routsep? Here. Ms. Sarwark? Sorry, Ms. Sarwark? Hello on the unmute, I'm here. <laughs> okay, Mr. Smith? Mr. Smith? Yeah, I'll mark him as absent, I'll come back to that. Ms. Bilyeu? Here. Mr. Coburn? Here. Mr. Hewitt? Mr. Hewitt will not be joining us tonight. Okay. Ms. Hogarth? Here. Mr. Nana? Okay, I will come back, but I'll mark him as absent for now. Mr. Nicola? Here. Mr. Phillips? Here. Mr. Wen? Mr. Wen? Right, Ms. Adams? I believe she, she will not be to... attending. Yeah. Mr. Bowen? Here. Mr. Buckman? Mr. Fiera? I am present. Mr. Hall? Here. Mr. Lucchini? Here. Mr. Luc Thank you. Mr. Sexton? Here. Mr. Valenti? Here. 
And the only staff I see is Mr. Fishman. Is there any other staff present? Mr. Krause is here somewhere. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna go back through the absent ones just to make sure. Mr. Smith. Mr. Nana. Mr. Went. And Mr. Buckman. All right, Mr. Chair, um, we have absent Mr. Smith, Mr. Hewitt, Mr. Nana, Mr. Went, and Mr. Buckman. That means for regionals, Mr. Fiera will be sitting in for Mr. Hewitt, and Mr. Lucini will be sitting in for Mr. Went. Thank you. Next item is the adoption of the agenda. I distributed earlier today a draft agenda. I know there's some discussion about maybe making some changes. So if anybody has motions on that, um, you should raise your hand and be ready for that. Um, let me see if I can share it. That'd probably be helpful. And Mr. Chair, I'm not able to raise, use the raise hand function. Okay. Um, did that work or did that destroy everything? I see it. Well, that worked. Okay. Well, and now I can't see who's raised their hands. So let's see. Uh, let's see if I can figure that out. I believe I'm the only one. Uh, okay. Has well, I'll go in a second. I am. Ms. Hogarth, while I figure it out. Ms. Hogarth? Yes, I'd like to add uh, five minutes to discuss um, postponing the December in person meeting. So that would probably be a new business. Any preference where in new business? No, wherever it suits. All right, well, why don't we put that one first? And I had my hand raised as well, uh, Mr. Chair. All right, so uh, let's see. That's a, that's a votable motion, right? Well, let me ask, is there objection to adding that item? Yes, I actually yes. object to consideration of the question. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hogarth, do you want to speak to it and then uh, we'll have Ms. Harlow state her objection and then we'll decide whether to have a vote on it? Um, yeah, I think in light of the um, likelihood of increasing infection rates and um, difficulties with travel continuing and the fact that we're coming up on influenza season, that it's probably better not to hold an in-person meeting in the middle of the winter. Um, so yeah, that's, so I would like to discuss options. Thank you, Ms. Hogarth. Chair notes the arrival of Mr. Smith, uh, Madam Secretary. Um, Ms. Harlos, did you wanna state, did you wanna speak to uh, your objection? Well, I actually uh, moved an objection to consideration of a question, which is not debatable. Okay, well, we're on, whether to amend the agenda, and she made a motion to amend the agenda. So are you objection, objecting to the adoption of the agenda? No, I'm, a, a, I'm objecting to the consideration of her amendment. That is the question I'm objecting to consideration of. Okay. You don't want to speak any further to it? Uh, no, it's uh, not debatable. Okay, well, she was first on her motion to consider, so, and I don't really see a reason why we would not just consider her motion and proceed that way. Well, do, you have, do you have a particular reason why you want to frame it the way that you framed it? I, that's... I'll just vote against it, Mr. Chair. Um, objection to consideration of the question I'm not allowed to elaborate. It doesn't require a second. It's not debatable. It's immediately voted upon. But if you'd prefer we didn't handle it that way, I'm not going to insist. Well, so just so you know where I'm coming from, um, I'd rather not force everybody to vote without at least hearing from one person in favor and one person against. Um, that's, that's fine. As I said, I'm not going to be fussy. Okay. Um, no one else has their hand raised except Mr. Fishman. Mr. Fishman, is it on this point? Uh, Mr. Molman got booted out and he needs the secretary to readmit him to the room. 
Um, I'm back in. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Since you would wish to handle it this way, I'll speak against Mr. Chair. All right, Ms. Harless. It's far too premature for this motion. Um, as it gets closer, I would be amenable to hearing that, but to be setting this kind of precedent when it's not at all yet ripe, I think is not good practice and bad precedence. When it actually becomes an issue rather than a hypothetical, then it's time for us to consider that. And now is not that time. We shouldn't be setting precedents of running scared before there's anything to be scared about. We just had a meeting last month and there were people who had concerns then, but yet we successfully had a meeting and we successfully had an in-person convention with not one case of anyone who was there. Ironically, there were some people who were um, on Zoom that unfortunately had, had come down with COVID. So this is just completely premature. Seeing no one else with their hands up, we can proceed to a vote on this item. So again, this is whether to add it to the agenda as a new 4A, uh, which would be a motion to, uh, I guess, uh, um, convert our in-person meeting to a remote meeting. It's not, this is not a vote on the motion, it's a vote on whether we will consider it later in the meeting. Is anybody unclear on what we're about to vote on? All right, I think this one can be by hands. So all hands are lowered. Um, if you're a member of the committee or a voting representative uh, uh, from your region, uh, vote when, when, when you can. Uh, so all those in favor, please raise your hand. Mr. Chair, I am mobile, uh, but I am virtually raising my hand if I can. Okay. Um, and then I'm adding myself as well, so that'll be uh, just plus two to this. All right. Uh, Point of information, uh, Mr. Chairman Stephen Akela, I'm mobile as well. I'm not sure if there's an option to raise a hand in the end. Okay. Um, which way do you want to vote? Uh, I'll vote yes. Okay. All right. Everybody lower their hands. All those opposed, please raise your hand. I'm raising my hand, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you. Can lower hands. And then any abstentions? Me. John Phillips. All right, one. Well, all right, cats and kittens. The vote was 14 to four to one, which is more than the uh, eight people who were able to vote. So I think it's two thirds no matter what. Um, but you know, for future reference, don't vote unless you can vote. Um, I guess I should, you know. I would like to point out that Chris Lucchini never lowered his hand after the affirmative. Uh, that might be why. So. And only a majority is required at this point, Mr. Chair, during okay. adoption. Well, it is added, so it'll be a new 4A, and all everything else will be subsequently uh, re-lettered there. Uh, Ms. Hogarth, you said 10 minutes, right? I did, yes. Other uh, agenda items? Mr. Coburn. Yes, um, I'd like to note that my motion will be to change the meeting from November 1st, which is the Sunday, to November 8th, not yeah. November, November 8th. I don't know what year I was looking at. Thank you for that correction. I'll correct that. Is there any objection to that correction? Seeing none. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Arliss. Um, several items. The old business and new business kind of got flipped. Um, the audit committee policy manual change is old business 
the committee rules policy manual change would be new business. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm just letting, I'm letting you know. And the policy manual change meeting minutes and policy manual change motions were supposed to be heard last time, and I don't know how they got skipped. So they're technically old business. Okay. Again, it doesn't so these, so particularly these matter. Be, let me just do it this way. These should be up here, and this should be down there. Is that right? It's hard for me to see on your screen. Um, I, I was able to make it bigger. One second. Yes, exactly. And uh, yeah, and the only, um, yeah, I think that that's correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any objection to that change? I think you need one more 10 minute up above there and one less below. Any more, sorry, uh, yeah. And just also to note, Mr. Chair, the audit committee policy manual change was my item. Okay. And the, I don't know if you changed it already, the one that was the committee rules. Yeah, you changed that one already. That was mistakenly attributed to Mr. Lungstra. That was mine. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Moved by Mr. Phillips. Is there a second? Second. Lucini. Seconded. Seconded by Lucini. Is there any objection? Seeing none, the agenda is adopted. And if you'll just give me a moment to print the new one so that I'm not going off the wrong one. Um, the first item up is social media messaging. Mr. Routsep and I conferred yesterday. Um, we're not ready and we'd appreciate the committee's indulgence to postpone this item until November. So I guess uh, I'll move that uh, even though I'm in the chair position. You can just yield your time, can't you? I guess we can do that. Well, it's it's to make sure that it pops up again in November, so. I second. All right. Chair moves, Ms. Epke seconds. Is there any objection? Seeing no objection, it is done. Ms. Harlos, audit committee policy manual change. Okay. I have that in the OneNote and I am going there right now. And if everyone could go to that, they would be able to see. So what I am moving is in policy manual section 1.03, section one, which is the chart of the uh, committees under the audit committee. It presently says one non-officer LNC member and two non-LNC members. And I would wish to add comma, excluding the assistant treasurer and also to add a footnote or end note, excuse me, per bylaws 9.2, the assistant treasurer is excluded from serving on the audit committee and that is the change I am moving. I'll second it, Tim. Been moved by Ms. Harlos and seconded by Mr. Hagan, I believe. Um, Everybody have it in front of them. I'm pulling up the OneNote myself, which a link for that is on the agenda at the very bottom, as well as in chat. Uh, is there any objection to this item? Going once, going twice. No objection, it's adopted. Ms. Harlos, policy manual change meeting minutes, 10 minutes. Okay, that is also 
in the OneNote, and I believe I did correctly put it under new business, uh, I mean, old business. Uh, let's see. Yes, this had been distributed prior to our September meeting as it was intended to be moved there, but somehow um, did not. I was recently, if I could give an introduction before I make my motion, just a brief one. I was at the National Association of Parliamentarians convention a few months ago where they really had went over the minutes and that if the custom of the society is to have more in the minutes than what I call the Skeletor outline, which was in um, Roberts, which even Miss Matson, who did less than I did, but even had more than that, that it should be in our policy manual. So in the policy manual, I amended it to more accurately reflect what we include. And also the auto approval process, I, it, it was unclear in several ways. And I do think the time frame can be too short. So I'm, I'll deal with that in debate. So that was just kind of the introduction of why I did this. So I will um, say the changes that I wish to make, they are in blue. And I don't know how much the chair wishes for me to read. In the first section talking about a conflict of interest, it says it should be noted in the minutes. I wish to add or in an attached report there too, because that's been our practice to attach the conflicts of interest. Um, we also, it's been our practice to add copies of all of the reports that were submitted. So I would like to add as a new bullet point, copies of reports submitted for review as appendices. And then it talks about saying what needs to be reported in the minutes regarding email ballots. And it talks about all the items. We've never put that in the minutes. We have always put it in the secretary's report, which is appended to the minutes. So I want to add the sentence that says this requirement may be satisfied by including this information in the secretary's report appended to the minutes. And I have a complete text of all motions made with notations of any vote counts for rising votes or votes by show of hands announced by the chair, um, which isn't required by Roberts, but it has been our custom to include that. Now onto the section that deals with auto approval. I wish to add this language. Minutes must be presented for approval no later than the next regular meeting with a draft circulated no later than 30 days prior to that meeting. Meetings occurring within 30 days of the next regular meeting will be presented for approval at the next following regular meeting with a draft circulated no later than 30 days prior to that meeting. Um, then it goes on to talk about how they can be auto approved. The reason I thought it was necessary to add this language is if it didn't go through the auto approval process, there was nothing in our policy manual that said when minutes were required to be like the last ditch date. So if you didn't auto approve them, you could keep them hanging out there for a year or more theoretically because nothing in our policy manual gave an actual deadline. It only talked about procedures for auto approval, which it never said they must go through auto approval. So that's why I felt you, we had to have language in there that gave a deadline. And when it came to the auto approval process, it used to be 15 days, or it currently is 15 days. I think 20 is more reasonable. Um, and 20 has been what I averaged last term, though I did get this one in 15 days. But coming after travel, people with jobs have to catch up. I can tell you it takes about 40 hours to produce a set of LNC minutes. And if you think doing 40 hours of work in 15 days is reasonable, we have a different definition of reasonable. Um, also added, oh, sorry, that was somewhat debate. I'm sorry. Um, I also added the section, if no changes are distributed during this period previously mentioned, the minutes shall be promoted from draft to final because it actually did not say that. And 
there's additional language in here that I think just clarifies auto approval. And it's all in blue here. And also a, a um, amendment to the end note where it just said Roberts recommends where everywhere else we said R-O-N-R. -R. That's more of a style thing. So everyone can read the blue language, but that's what I'm moving. Thank you, Ms. Harless. So Ms. Harless has moved this item. Is there a second? I will second. Seconded by Mr. Routsep. Is there objection? I have a point. Mr. Ferrer. Mr. Ferrer, you're objecting? I'm not objecting. I have a question. Can I ask that now before? I ask your question. Okay. Uh, when we're talking about meetings in here, are we only talking about our quarterly in-person meetings, or does this also include meetings like this? That Ms. Harless? Meeting? It is dealing with any meetings. Okay. So I think... I think there will be cases where it will be uh, physically impossible for you to meet some of this criteria. For example, if we move our November meeting to November 8th and we keep our December meeting before December 8th, there's no way you could circulate the minutes, 30 minutes prior to that meeting, or 30 uh, days prior to that meeting. Okay, I think you're confusing two things and maybe a word needs to be put okay. in here. All minutes, no matter what kind of meeting, must be distributed for approval no later than the next. Oh, I see what you're saying. So the next. So how would you suggest to correct that, Mr. Fierro? I When I wrote this, I don't think we approved these monthly meetings because I've had this in my pocket for a bit. Um, I'd rather not. If this is a minor change, I'm fine with wordsmithing it, but it sounds like this might be more than minor. Um, so it might be better to wordsmith this outside of the context of the large committee. Yeah, I, I only see two ways to change it. One is to give the secretary less time, which I don't think is a, a great thing to do. And the other is to say that our, uh, our in-person meetings have to follow these rules, but the, uh, the virtual meetings that we have maybe have a different time frame associated with them. And I agree. Here's what I suggest if this will be amenable. I would actually move on my own motion to strike this language here, and I would wordsmith that outside of this meeting, but still present the rest of the language, because this is somewhat independent. We never dealt with a drop-dead deadline. This is new language to add something that never was there before, but I would still like to move the rest of it. So I would move to strike this language that deals with the 30 days before, and I will wordsmith that and bring that to the next meeting. All right, so that's the, the minutes must be presented for approval paragraph, that paragraph? Yes, and I will work with Mr. Fiera on, on wordsmithing that. All right, Ms. Harlow's moves to amend to strike those changes. Is there a second? I'll second it. Mr. Ferrara seconds. Is there objection to that strikeout? Seeing none, that amendment is adopted. So now we're back to the main motion minus that language. Seeing no further speakers, is there objection to adoption of the remainder of the language? Going once, going twice, all right. It is adopted. Um, Ms. Harlos, I might suggest, uh, you know, there's a committee you chair that might be able to help you wordsmith this too. Yes, of course, yes. I had thought of that as well. All righty. Next item, policy manual change on motions. I don't think that's written okay. correctly here. Is that? It's on party records, but it's party dealing record. with motions in party records. So okay. Ms. Harlow. Thank you. Um, I do have the motion in the one note, but I'm going to present it slightly different because of a change by um, Mr. Mullman, who had wanted a four-digit year rather than a two-digit year, and that would be the only change. So I wish to add to section 
2.07 um, party records to add a new section four and move what was, um, one second here, I, it, actually to strike out the current section four electronic mail ballot results um, because that is already dealt with earlier and put in a different section four, which would also encompass reporting of these mail ballot results, which would say the secretary shall assign a ballot slash motion number to each substantive motion using the following format, four digit year, two digit month, um, digit date slash digit motion for that day. For example, the fifth motion on February 5th, 2020 would be assigned 2020-02-05-5. The secretary shall maintain a log of all substantive ballot slash motions by number, including the full text of the motion, the mover slash sponsors, the roll call vote if taken, and its final disposition and make this log available to all party members. That is what I'm moving, and I'll wait to speak to debate and if I see if I get a second. Ms. Harlos moves to adopt this language. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Molman. Is there objection? Would you like me to speak to it first, sir? Uh, yeah, why don't you do that, Ms. Harlos? Okay. This is following the practice that I've done now. Um, I did it as a trial for my first term as secretary. And it has, I believe, worked out very well. It used to be people would say, I think there was a motion this date or that date. People couldn't remember when it was. You're digging through minutes. Having a log, which is something that a lot of state parties do. And in fact, I got this idea from the Libertarian Party of Florida. Um, and we implemented it in Colorado to great effect, and that's why I then wanted to implement it. Um, it helps us very easily keep track of things in one spot, and party members, when it comes time for LNC elections, can easily go and look at this log and see how people voted on motions they cared about. Um, Dr. Moulton used to manually comply, comply, compile something like this, and it would take him I don't even know how many hours. And it, it shouldn't be that difficult for people to see at a glance the voting records of the, um, of the LNC members. So it's a benefit to both members and a benefit to us. Thank you, Ms. Harlos. The motion's been moved and seconded. Is there any objection? Mr. Hagan, is this objection or a question? Um, motion to amend. All right, you have to object first. Okay, then I'll object. All right, there is objection, so we'll proceed to debate. Uh, Ms. Harlos, is there anything further you wish to speak to on your motion? Uh, no, I might raise my hand again, depending upon what's said. Okay, so we'll move to other uh, questions or motions or debate. Mr. Hagan. Um, yeah, I'd like to move to amend on the one note to be on the third line. Um, we're starting with digit date. Change that to say two digit date dash two digit numerical motion for that day. And the following line for, for the example, instead of dash five, change it to dash zero five. Gotcha. Uh, do you want to speak further to why you're proposing the amendment? Um, I actually saw this in the email list as a suggestion from Mr. Molman that especially to, if you're trying to sort these things, if we have more than nine motions in a day, um, it would place 10 um, right after 09 instead of having the 10th motion after the dash one in between the first and second motion. Thank you, Mr. Hagan. And a fair point, I think my record is 22 motions in one day. <laughs> is there, uh, so Mr. Hagan has made that motion to amend is there a second? I second it. Second by Ms. Harlos. Is there objection? Seeing no objection, the amendment is adopted. Back to the main motion. Is there any further debate or motions or questions? Seeing none, the question's automatically called. Let me ask, is there objection to the adoption of this proposal? 
Going once, going twice. All right, it is adopted. Next item, selection of the convention voting process committee. Ms. Harless, can, would you mind uh, describing how much, you know, what we're voting for and how many, uh, and what you've Certainly. provided the committee? And I did stick it in one note, the motion, the enabling motion for this committee, um, which I will read aloud that we were to solicit applications for the convention voting process committee, um, capping those applications for no more than five members to be selected. It was supposed to be at our in-person meeting, but we moved that with the party chair and the party secretary serving as additional non-voting ex officio members of this committee. So it is five additional five members in addition to you and me, Mr. Chair. All right. So there is a packet of 133 pages of application materials. Um, and I'm sure you've read them all and reviewed them all. Um, there's a couple things that we should do right now. One is if anybody on the committee wishes to speak regarding any of the applicants, that's in order. And then as well as determining um, how we're gonna proceed with uh, selecting those five members. And Ms. Harlow says that um, she's ready for kind of anything we wanna throw at her on in terms of voting method. So the floor is open on that, both of those things. I would like to speak, Mr. Chair. Ms. Harless. Okay, I would like to, to speak on behalf of several candidates, um, and none of them asked me to. I just, after reviewing, and I re have a lot invested in this committee, um, Mr. Thrasher had already spoken for himself, um, and I would second his election to this committee. Um, but also, uh, Mr. Mike Seebeck, is someone from Colorado that was my one of my head tellers and intimately knows the issues and is a very, very detailed oriented person. So I would definitely recommend himself along with Guy Merrill, who was another one of my tellers. Um, and if I could add, not to overwhelm everyone, one other name, it would be um, Mr. John Fockler. I have others that I intend upon voting for, but I don't want to hog the mic. So those are ones I definitely wanted to put out there. Thank you, Ms. Harlos. Anyone else? Mr. Chair. Mr. Mullen. Yeah, I, I wanted to speak. Uh, Ms. Harlos spoke about Mr. Fockler. Uh, I, I concur. Uh, Mr. Fockler's been around a long time. Um, and I will say that I did not get to review the full list. So I'm probably going to miss somebody that I would have recommended. But I did notice on the list that there are a lot of people who have been to basically one convention that signed up. And while I appreciate their enthusiasm, I, I have concerns that a number of those folks don't have the breadth of, of experience of multiple conventions. Uh, as such, another person I want to uh, ask the committee to consider would be Jim Fulner from Michigan. Uh, Jim has been around a long time. I think I first interacted with him at the 2014 convention in Columbus. And, um, you know, I, I definitely want to look at experience of people who have been to national conventions more than just one, especially if the only one they've been to is the most recent, which was an anomaly. Um, I think that it is important that we get people that know uh, how a normal convention <laughs> runs for us um, so they can understand the culture and try to wedge the technology to meet the culture. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mullman. Anyone else? I would add, Mr. Chair, that Mr. Fulner was on my list as well, so I would concur. Okay. Well, I'll also take the opportunity to speak on behalf of some people. Um, I forget if I've mentioned this to this LNC yet, um, but uh, interestingly enough, Ms. Harlos, Mr. Molman, and I did a lot of work um, to kind of untangle our convention voting problems. And uh, at least as of, I don't know, I would say February or March, um, 
we'd actually hit upon what we thought would be a good solution for the coming convention, um, dealing with scantrons and some improved processes, and um, and then all the COVID stuff basically threw that uh, all that planning out the window, and and we weren't able to utilize any of it. So. Uh, I certainly do share the view that uh, um, having people who've been to conventions before and have seen firsthand that it why it takes so long and that it takes so long and, and being frustrated that it takes so long. Um, I do want to highlight uh, Mr. Will McVeigh, who's one of the applicants who, uh, frankly, was coming up with solutions to a lot of these issues. Mr. Molman's giving a thumbs up to. Um, I think he'd be a great asset to it. He's, and Ms. Harless is also doing her thumbs up on it. Um, so uh, I, I'd strongly urge uh, committee members to consider, or to look closely at Mr. McVeigh's application and consider including him. Um, I would also second Mr. Thrasher, who's certainly very familiar with our bylaws and um, with our rules and has been to lots of conventions in lots of different capacities and we'll be able to speak as a first year law student on this committee, which will be awesome. And then uh, I also wanna highlight uh, Mr. Tom Roulette, um, I think is Missouri, um, who I know has been to a number of conventions and I think he would um, bring some good common sense to the committee's deliberations. Um, that's not, again, that's not to speak negatively of any of the other applicants, but um, those are just three names that jumped out at me. And he was also on my list, Mr. Chair. Yes. <laughs> Since no one's speaking up, I'm going to propose that we do this by approval voting. I'm okay with that, Mr. Chair. A uh, question would be, uh, if we end up with too many or, or a tie or anything like that, um, how are we going to break that tie? I would say, uh, well, if it's a tie, we could do, you know, high, depending on the state, it's, you know, roll the dice or high card draw or something like that. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair? Yeah, Ms. Carlos. OPA vote automatically um, breaks ties randomly. So there we go. Okay. And then one more question. How many members do we are on this committee? Only five? Five plus me and Karen Ann. Okay. You guys, the only question I would have, and I know that it's out of order to consider it at this moment, but would it be wise to expand this committee a bit? We've got a good pool of talent out there, and, and this kind of thing is a big deal. It's an LNC created committee, so the size of the committee can be changed by the LNC. Um, it's, it's within the power of the LNC. That would be my answer to that question. Ms. Harless, I guess we're ready to start the uh, ballot. I don't see anybody else wishing to speak on this. Mr. Chairman, okay. can, can, okay. can the Secretary clarify that everybody who applied is going on the ballot and there were no additional nominations, correct? Yes, that's a good point to make. So Ms. Harless, you've got everybody who applied uh, in the ballot. I do. And I would ask the chair though, would you be limiting our choice to just five? or as many as we like. With approval, it would be as many as as many as many people would like to vote for us. Okay. Um, but to the second half of Ms. Bilyeu's question, is anyone aware of any applicants who are not uh, listed on the, on the list? I think that's the answer to your question, Ms. Bilyeu. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, anything further on this item before we proceed to a vote? Uh, Mr. Chair, I will need about two minutes to set up the ballot. What I propose we do is um, it's 8.45 right now. We can recess till 9, and then uh, that'll allow people to vote and frantically look through applications if they want to frantically look through them, and uh, and then we can come back at 9 o'clock. How does that sound? Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Phillips? No, this is Mullman. I'm sorry. Mr. Mullman. Hey, can we... Can we put this vote to the list and, and that way get more time. Like, can we make it close in 24 hours? Do we have to finish this now? You can move that. 
I would like to move that. All right, Mr. Bowman moves to second. conduct this vote online rather than in the meeting. Mr. Phillips seconds. Is there objection? Seeing no objection, that is what we will do. I can do the ballot immediately after this meeting then. Yeah, that would work best. All right, so ignore what I said about a recess. No recess for anybody. All right, that completes old business. It is 846. We are now at new business. A, Ms. Hogarth, motion to convert the December meeting to a virtual meeting. Ten minutes. Um, you would like me to speak to it? If you'd like to. Uh, I did before briefly, um, but I will just add that uh, I'm in the academic and science world, and I don't know what the business world is like, but all travel has been shut down. So um, I understand, you know, that we all accepted this. If, if that's what we decide to do, it's fine. But there is a, there is a, um, a strong likelihood of a, you know, a fall and winter second wave. I mean, if we look at the uh, Spanish flu, ooh, that's not right. You know, the influenza epidemic of 17, um, we see that things ease off and then they got much worse. And that's what winter's for. Um, flu season's coming up. Uh, all academic travel has been shut down. There's no science meetings in person. Um, and there is a big social cost for people who are returning for who are traveling. Like, you know, I, it, you know, you get back and um, your coworkers look at you funny, you know, like, where'd you go? You know, you, it's just weird. Um, I don't think that an in-person meeting is enough value added to outweigh that um, at this time. I don't, but uh, others may feel differently. I, I think there's a lot of value added to in-person meetings. And I think that we can try to add a lot of that through online meetings. There's stuff that we can do to include other people and, um, you know, to make it more of a social atmosphere uh, that we all crave. Uh, and have those discussions that we need to have, but without taking the risk and exposing others to risk. Thank you, Ms. Hogarth. We'll open it up for, oh, sorry, it needs to be moved and seconded. Ms. Hogarth has moved it. The motion, is there a second? I second. Seconded by Mr. Lucini. Is there objection? Yes. Hearing objections, we'll proceed to debate and discussion. Um, and the first hand up is Mr. Longstreth. Mr. Longstreth. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. I would possibly be interested in hybrid, although I'm cautious about what happened in Orlando. Would that be something that might be in order to consider? And what is your opinion on that? Terrible. Is that a question for Ms. Hogarth or for me? That's a question for you as, as the national chair. Okay. Um, well, we did it in Orlando, so and this is, I'm talking about the Orlando LNC meeting, not the Orlando convention generally. Um, and how we did it in Orlando ultimately uh, was um, basically everybody logged into Zoom. Um, if you were remotely, that's entirely how you participated. If you were there, you were logged in and that's how people were able to hear you and communicate. And uh, it, uh, I mean, we were able to get through our business. So it, uh, we have done it before. Um, would be my answer to that question. Is is that a, a good an is that is that an answer to your question, Mr. Longstrom? It it is. I th I think that's relevant information. Thank you. Okay. I have Mr. Molman, Mr. Routsep. All right, Mr. Molman. Yeah, uh, my concern with this, I, and there is nothing. Mr. Thrasher summed it up perfectly. I love seeing all of you in person. I love the meetings, not just because I think they're more productive but because there is a, a need for us to remain social and sociable and being face-to-face -face helps encourage a healthy environment, I believe, for the committee and for the body as a whole. That said, I have been on two flights recently. Um, at least United and American have gone back to full flights, which I am extremely disappointed in. Um, not happy about 
being crammed into a sardine can in a epidemic. Um, it's my understanding Southwest is still keeping seats separate, and when I last flew Delta, they were as well. The uh, I lean toward being in favor of meeting in person, but given the state of everything, uh, certainly understand anyone's vote either way. Um, I, I'm just going to go with whatever the will of the rest of the committee is on this. I, that's where I'm at. Thank you, Mr. Mullman. I have Mr. Roudsep and then Mr. Coburn. Mr. Roudsep? And I have my hand raised, Mr. Chair. Okay, I'll add you. Mr. Roudsep. Uh, I want to meet in person. I love seeing everyone, and I believe we also get a lot of work done when this happens. However, it goes beyond COVID and seasonal flu. Uh, it was only, today's the 4th, so it was actually on Thursday. It was October 1st that the National Forestry Service also said uh, that there is going to be no appreciable rain to the Los Angeles area from now until January 15th, and they have put significant wildfire potential at above normal and no expectation to control the current wildfires through the end of the year. So this will also make travel more difficult uh, coming into the Los Angeles area. Thank you, Mr. Railtep. I have Mr. Coburn and then Ms. Harlos. Mr. Coburn. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to um, amend this motion to, for a hybrid meeting, hybrid option. Ms. Harlos, is it in the one note? Probably not, because it, it's so new. No, it, okay. the wording of the motion wasn't in the one note. Okay, I'm just going to say the wording of the motion is to convert. Um, Ms. Hogarth, did you have specific wording, or should I just make it up right now? Go for it, please. Convert the meeting of December, was it 5th, 6th? I think it was later, the 12th, 13th, I thought. I thought it was 4th, 5th. Oh, it is? It's, okay. It's the 5th and 6th. Number 5th, 6th, um, to a virtual meeting, and then Mr. Coburn is moving to amend to what? Strike the word virtual and make it hybrid. Okay. I will second that motion. Mr. Coburn moves. Mr. Longstress seconds. Is there objection? Yes. yes. All right. We will move to debate on the Coburn motion then. Mr. Coburn, do you wish to speak to it? Yeah. Um, I think that this comes down to a matter of our principles. Um, we as a party believe in choice, and I don't really see a good reason to exclude people that uh, are not able to go for whatever reason, whether they're immunocompromised, they can't go for work, um, they have coworkers that are immunocompromised, or they're restricted because of their work um, or because of their states. Um, I think that it's important that we include everyone um, to the best of their ability, to whatever degree they would like to participate, and so that's why I'm in favor of a hybrid meeting. Um, thank you, Mr. Coburn. Ms. Harlos and Ms. Mr. Valente, I have you on the speaker's list for the main motion. Would you like to be on the amendment as well? Yes, sir. All right. Yes. Okay, so I will add you, and Ms. Harlos, that makes you next. Ms. Harlos. Okay, so speaking against the amendment, um, hybrid is does not work well. Uh, if I ever had to choose between all virtual or hybrid, I would choose all, all virtual every single time. We did do this and it created two classes of LNC members. And there was lots of complaints from the people on the virtual end. And then there really, it turns into then an economic punishment for those who decide to actually attend because it is no small sacrifice financially to go to these meetings. And also we picked these locations because these areas have not been visited by the LNC in what, was it 20 years? And they deserve to actually see a full LNC in motion and to actually have us go there and participate in the life of that affiliate. The same way we had an opportunity to last time. It is completely unfair to that region and that location to convert this into hybrid. Um, if it went all virtual, then we can consider them for another time. But I'm opposed to both of them. But if it's possible to be doubly opposed, I'm doubly opposed to virtual. Thank you, Ms. Harlos. Mr. Valente. I mean, a uh, hybrid. Pardon me. 
Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I am. Uh, I, I'm. I'm for the the hybrid, uh, allowing people to have choice. Just because, uh, you know, personally, I I've already bought my ticket for Los Angeles. I'm I'm ready to go. I want to go see it. Um, and uh, for those people that that are are having a problem with doing it, then you know I, I'm okay with them exercising that right to participate, but uh, do it in a manner that makes them feel. Uh, safer and uh, reduces their exposure to uh, judging coworkers. Thank you, Mr. Valente. I have Mr. Molman, and then time will be up on the item. Mr. Molman, I, I just have a question. The uh, contract that we have with the venue, does it suppose a certain room block or a certain F and B minimum or anything like that that would be affected by going hybrid? I have to be careful about what I can say because uh, we'll obviously have a contract negotiating posture, but suffice it to say, um, we do, but honestly, okay. whatever the LNC decides, we will make it work. Okay. Um, time on this item is expired on the full item. So unless there's a motion to extend, we'll vote on everything. I ex move to extend for five minutes. All right, Mr. Lucien moves to extend by five minutes. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. Second by Ms. Harlos. Is there objection? Yes. There is objection, so we'll vote on whether to extend time. Um, hands down, please. So the motion is to extend time by five minutes. Voting yes would extend time. Voting no would not extend time. All those in favor, please raise your hand. My hand is raised, Mr. Chair. All right. I'm un unable to raise my hand, so could you just put me down as a yes? All right, I'll add two. What a voter, Mr. Chairman. Is there a reason why we're not using the yes and no voting features? Oh, that's a good point. We ought to do that. Uh, why don't we do that then? I'm sorry. Hands down, everybody, and just vote uh, according to using the yes or no features. That way it counts faster. Thank you, Ms. Billion. I do, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Joshua Smith. I do not see the yes or no feature on mine. It should be, yep. if you click participants, it should be at the bottom there. Oh, it uh, lets me do that, even though it doesn't let me raise hand. Oh, good. Did you find it, Mr. Smith? Oh. I did, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Can I vote? Ooh, I, even I can vote. That's nice. All right, by vote of... 10 to 6. Is this two-thirds, Ms. Harlos, do you know? Yes, it's, it requires two-thirds. All right, time is not extended then. Vote of 10 to 6. Hands down. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes, Ms. Harlos? May I, when I want to raise my hand, simply use the yes, and that way I don't have to keep telling yeah. you? Yeah, well, we Thank do. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. Time has expired on this item, so we will vote first on Mr. Coburn's amendment and then on the main motion, uh, depending on how it's resolved. Um, Mr. Coburn's amendment would change the language, which currently reads, convert the December 5th, 6th, 5th, 6th meeting to a virtual meeting to instead read a hybrid meeting. Is everyone, does everyone, does anyone not understand what we're about to vote on? All right, on this one, we'll vote using the yes, no feature, since it's an amendment. Um, all those in favor, or, you know, just vote yes or no on the Coburn Amendment. Anyone else wishing to vote? The vote is nine to six. The Coburn Amendment is adopted. We're back to the main motion. Time has expired on the item, so we'll proceed to a vote on it. Ms. Harlos, could you call the roll? Okay, one moment. Let me just note this. What, what was the vote on amendment, nine to six? Nine to six. So we're voting on the main motion as adopted? As amended to read. Oh, right, as amended, excuse me. Convert December 5-6 meeting to a hybrid meeting. Okay, one moment. Let me just note this. All righty. Ms. Bill Yu. No. Mr. Coburn. Yes. Ms. Epke. Yes. Mr. Hagan. Yes. 
I will vote no. Mr. Fiera. Yes. Ms. Hogarth. Can you come back? Yes. Mr. Longstreth. Pass. Mr. Mullman. Expressed ex abstention. Mr. Hall. Yes. Mr. Nikayla. Um, I vote aye. Mr. Phillips. Yes. Mr. Radsep. Yes. Ms. Sarwark. Yes. Mr. Smith. No. Mr. Lucini. Rest extension. Abstention. Mr. Uh, let me go back. Ms. Hogarth. Yes. Mr. Longstreth. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, it is 11 to 3 to 2. I'll vote yes. So 12 to 3 to 2. Motion is adopted. Robert, you're here, right? Why don't we talk tomorrow? <laughs> um, Robert has requested a rough count of anyone planning to attend in person. I don't want to do that in front of everybody. Um, why don't you email me um, your plans if you have them sorted out already? Um, so that way we can sort it out that way. Uh, next hey, item, Mr. Chair. Who was that, Mr. Mullman? On that, can we can we just run a can we run just a quick poll on that as well? Um, no, 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 no. I mean, I meant like just so it would be online, so that. I, oh, I'm you sorry. Can, yes, being no. through Ms. Harlos. Uh, Ms. Harlos, if we do that, are we able to? Because um, on that, it's helpful to know who is who. Um, I'm not sure of your question, sir. Well, I can facilitate why that. Just, why don't we everybody just email me? I think that'll be easiest. Yep, never mind. Sorry, what? didn't mean to make it hard. Mr. Chairman, what are we supposed to email you? Um, if you're planning on attending in person or hybrid for December. Okay. I do have a question on that for you, Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Arnold. Um, I am somewhat confused. So to attend virtually, is it because you have uh, either some kind of hardship or can we just all decide to attend virtually whether we have a hardship or not? There's a pandemic. I think that's the reason. Okay. So we could all decide just to attend virtually. I think that's why I'm asking for an email so we can ascertain that fact. All right. Thank you, everybody. Next item is motion to modify 2020 budget items. This is both me and Mr. Hagan, but Mr. Hagan, would you mind introducing it and speaking to it? Mr. Hagan. Oh, is he not here? Sorry. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I move to amend the budget. Um, Mr. Hagen, you're very low. Is this better? Yes. I think you need to get a new microphone. <laughs> um, I'll move to amend the budget um, to change uh, line item number 70, ballot access from 235000 change it to $91,900. Um, change line number 50, affiliate support, from 83000 and make it 57300 Change line 36, ballot access fundraising expenses, from 10000 change it to 4800 uh, Change line 60, campaign and candidate support, from $183,200 to... $260,200 and change line 32 fundraising from 333400 and change it to $430,400. Thank you, Mr. Hagan. Is there a second? A second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Ferreira. Uh, is there objection? Objection. All right, there is objection. Mr. Hagan, do you want to speak to the motion? Um, sure. Basically, most of these, um, some of the 
areas where spending is going either higher or lower than was projected. Um, we set the budget last December out. Um, like one of the biggest, the ballot access, that totally changed this year with the COVID, and we were able to get some relief in some states. Um, so it's not required, didn't require nearly as so much as we were project, projecting. And the staff had requests that we do some increasing in the campaign candidate support and also for fundraising. All right, thank you. So we'll move to questions or amendments or debate. Mr. Mullman, is that you? Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'm trying to raise my hand. All right, Mr. Mullman. Uh, so my main concern was the affiliate support line. Um, you know, I know what the CRM costs run monthly. I have a rough estimate of what uh, Andy Burns affiliate support specialist salary is. And I know the committee uh, recently met and had some ideas uh, on spending some money as well. Um, Mr. Mullen, are you, did you have more? Is my phone breaking up? Yeah. I, well, if, okay. you kept, if you kept talking, we can hear you now. Uh, okay. So my main concern is with the budget. Um, Andy Burns' is salary included in that budget line. I think Mr. Krauss is in the gallery. Mr. Krauss, are you uh, there and able to answer the question without? Uh, yes, it is. Without I being you... too specific about. Right. I uh, Ken, I sent you an email earlier. If you can find that, and I explained okay. the breakdown. But yes, there's enough left in the budget to include um, the expected some of the expected ex regular CRM type expenses related to affiliate support plus Andy. This isn't moving, you know, all the budget. There's still budget left over in affiliate support, of course. That's expected right. to cover. And we could go up to 10% over that. I think that's sufficient to cover what you all are planning. And if it's not, we could readdress it next month or in December, of course. Or by an email ballot. Okay. All right. I'm just, I just want to make sure that we're not cutting critical funds that's all so how we approached this was we went through what we've spent as of september 30th and produced a projection of what we're planning on spending for the next three months and looked for big gaps um so at least as as far as what we know we're planning on spending affiliate support is included in in this um okay. obviously if there's stuff that people want to do that they're not communicating that's not reflected in this yeah, and I would say the only thing there is that the affiliate support committee just met for the first time. Ms. Sarwark uh, may want to speak to that as she is the chair of that committee, but we just we literally just met a, less than a week ago. Right. So. Yeah, can I say just like one thing? Um, sure, I was Sarwark. I was not expecting any kind of um, discussion on this, uh, so I'm not really prepared, um, but. I think everything that we want to do will be covered by our own internal fundraising. Um, but my concerns are with the CRM, as Ken said, and also, of course, we want to make sure everything else is taken care of because that's why we have the committee and that's why we have the entire team. The affiliates are important to grow the party too. Yeah. So it's a big priority of mine that we get all of the CRM waitlist states off the waitlist and get them onboarded and that's reflected in this budget. And if it turns out that it's inadequate, I will personally sponsor a motion to, to change that and we'll find the savings elsewhere. So I'll consider that a commitment for me. Mr. Mullman, your hands up. Is that a artifact or you wanna speak again? I'm gonna guess that's an artifact. It's an artifact. Sorry, I was okay. double muted in the wrong place. Yeah, it's artifact. Sorry. All right. Other questions, comments, debate, motions? 
Seeing none, the question's automatically called. Uh, Ms. Harlos, would you mind calling the roll? All right, just give me one moment. Need to copy my template. All righty, Ms. Bill Yu? Yes. Mr. Coburn? Yes. Ms. Epke? Yes. Mr. Hagen? Yes. I will vote yes. Mr. Fiera? Yes. Ms. Hogarth? Yes. Mr. Longstreth? Yes. You said yes or pass? Yes. Mr. Mullman? Uh, I'll vote yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. Nicola? Vote yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Routset? Yes. Ms. Sarwark? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Lucini? Yes. Mr. Chair, it's 16 to 0 to 0. I'll vote yes. Okay, 17 to 0 to 0. All right, thank you, everybody. Next item. Established presidential campaign coordinated spending limit with state affiliates, 10 minutes. Mr. Hagan. Um, yeah, we'll move to assign to each of state affiliate $250,000 of the LNC's coordinated party expenditure limit for the presidential campaign. And affiliates spending against this limit shall disclose the expenditures to the operations director and the treasurer. Mr. Hagen has moved to adopt this. Is there a second? Seconded. All right, seconded by Mr. Longstreth. Is there objection? Going once. Going twice. No objection. Without objection. Next item. Um, Mr. Coburn's motion to change the date of the November special meeting from November 1st to November 8th, uh, 10 minutes. Mr. Coburn. Yep. Um, I think this is pretty simple for me. Um, we voted previously to have our meetings on the first Sunday of the month. The first Sunday of next month is November 1st, which is just a few days before the election. Um, I think that most of us will be preoccupied with other important activities, whether that be campaigns or ballot access or just supporting your local affiliate. And I would like to suspend to the next Sunday so we're all able to do that and do all the things that our great party does. Thank you, Mr. Coburn. Ms. Billy, you have your hand up. Is that a to debate on this or is it a motion or a point? Yeah, it's to debate. I, okay. I don't agree with the change. Okay. So Mr. Coburn has moved uh, this motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Set. Seconded by Mr. Mullman. Uh, there, I've already identified uh, objections, so we'll proceed to debate. Um, Mr. Coburn, is there anything more you wanted to say on your motion? Uh, not at this moment. All right. Ms. Bilyeu. Uh, it's just a personal objection to it. I have um, a state party business the following weekend, so that's, uh, that's it for me. Thank you, Ms. Bilyeu. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on this motion? Anyone at all? Seeing none, the question's automatically called. Secretary, please call the roll. Got to unmute my mic. Just give me one second. I didn't know if you were going to do a roll call one on this one. You surprised me. Any motion? Uh, I know, I know. One sec, let me copy something here. Duplicate. All righty. Ms. Bill Yu. No. Mr. Coburn. Yes. Ms. Epke. Yes. Mr. Hagen. No. I will vote no. Mr. Fiera. No. Ms. Hogarth? Yes. 
Mr. Longstreth. Yes. Mr. Mullman. Abstain. Mr. Hall. Yes. Mr. Nicaela. I abstain. Mr. Phillips. I abstain. Mr. Radsep. Abstain. Ms. Sarwark. Yes. Mr. Smith. No. Mr. Lucini. Yes. Mr. Chair, it's seven to five to four. Hello, yes. Okay, that is now eight to five to four. All right, motion's, motion is adopted. Next item, committee rules policy manual change. Ms. Harlos, 10 minutes. Okay, one second. This is in the one note as policy manual change re-committees and special rules under new business with previous note. And this will be much shorter um, after the objection from Mr. Molman because I had done this to um, possibly address an objection he had and he let me know it did not. So I am not moving everything I have here. The only thing I am moving is changing the title of section 1.03 which was committee appointments in terms of office to committees, because if you look at section 1.03, it deals with a whole lot more than appointments in terms of office. I have a feeling that this title was adopted when that was all it dealt with and things kept getting added to the section that kind of expanded it. So I am just moving to strike out the words appointments in terms of office, from the title and making committee plural, so adding an S. Would you mind putting that wording in the chat or something just so people can see it? Um, okay, uh, so section 1.03 is presently entitled committee appointments and terms of office so from that part this would make it entitled just one three committees okay so the substantive stuff sorry not to i didn't mean that to come off that way but the 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 main changes your proposal you're deferring those and it's just a change to the title i'm withdrawing i'm not moving them okay it, they don't do what i thought they would okay so the motion is then, as I understand it, is to change it where it currently reads section 1.03 committees to instead, instead read, sorry, no, currently opposite. reads committee appointments in terms of office and to instead just have it read committees. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, Ms. Harlos has made that motion. Is there a second? I second. Who was that? That was Mr. Ferreira. All right, Mr. Ferrer seconds, is there objection? Going once, going twice. All right, it's adopted without objection. Next item is Halloween pumpkin contest. This was Ms. Adams item, but she asked Mr. Longstreth to cover for her if she was not there, Mr. Longstreth, hopefully she told you that fact. Yes, it's actually a, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start. It is a joint project uh, that a couple of us got together, and it was initiated uh, during, uh, or at, during the social portion of our uh, um, uh, Saturday evening at the last in-person meeting. Um, and the idea is that we would uh, host a pumpkin carving contest, uh, put it on, a, on our website, uh, and advertise for it and that there would be a certain buy-in for it. And we, we basically uh, sent a, a briefing of this project out to everybody. And so the motion that I would like to begin discussion on is that we would instruct uh, that this body, the LNC, would instruct staff to execute the Halloween uh, pumpkin carving contest as outlined and uh, uh, as outlined in the uh, submitted uh, uh document that, that we submitted earlier. So we'll start there and see if I can get a second. All right. Mr. Longstreth, that sounded so formal and dry. Why don't you uh, tell us about how exciting this contest is and how much fun it's going to be? Well, sure. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so <laughs> we, 
what we're looking at is the idea would be uh, that uh, we have uh, uh, people can carve pumpkins uh, with Liberty themes, uh, uh, whether that's uh, LP related or candidate related, that sort of thing, but Liberty uh, sort of themes uh, and, and advertise uh, our party on their pumpkins uh, this time of year. Uh, and that part of that would be for uh, people could submit that uh, and try to raise uh, money for their uh, affiliate in uh, what would then turn into a voting uh, sort of contest. Um, and um, yeah, it would just uh, be a cool way to engage members, get our name out there a little bit more and that sort of thing. The idea uh, is, is that we hope that uh, this uh, could be kind of a first step uh, to a templated sort of program that we can continue in the future. Uh, so this uh, one deals with uh, pumpkin carving. We'd like to see it possibly be expanded to hol holiday lights uh, and that sort of thing and, and see how we can play on this uh, in the future. So just an idea that uh, this uh, a couple of members of this board put together in order to try and uh, help with development in our own way um, as opposed to necessarily making phone calls and that sort of thing. So uh, that is the, the less formal version of it and I hope uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you Mr. Longstreth. I just have one question. Um, the prize, um, it was unstated in the document. I was wondering if, if you guys had given more thought to it yet. Uh, the last thing that I recall talking about on the prize, I'd have to see what we threw together in the uh, yeah, we were looking at a trophy. We have a trophy idea in there. We hadn't really given it much more thought, but that could come together very, very quickly if we decide to move forward with this project. Okay. Uh, Mr. Longstreth has made that motion. Is there a second? I will second. All right, second by Mr. Roudsep. We'll go ahead. I think people want to speak on it, so we'll, we'll do that. Uh, Mr. Hagan. Um, I actually just had a question for Mr. Fishman, that since this would require at least some staff time, do you have the resources to support this, or would it affect something else? Mr. Fishman? We, we definitely will find a way to make this work. Mr. Hagan, is that a satisfactory answer? Yep. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mullman? Yeah. Um, I'm make sure I'm unmuted again. Um, I'm excited about this project. I got to watch it happen. I was unfortunately too busy to really help plan it, but uh, I think it's a great idea. Um, I'd actually like to make a motion to amend to authorize up to $500 for prize, to allocate up to $500 for prizes um, as part of the motion, and that way the the ad hoc committee of the pumpkin carving contest can figure that out how to you know do whatever and i think 500 is plenty if they decide to do a second and third place that gives plenty of leeway leeway and of course we're all sensitive we're not going to waste money so but i figured that's a nice way to handle that so i'm making a motion to amend to add on the authorization of expenditure of up to 500 dollars um sure. for the prize mr I'm mullman has made that motion it's been seconded by mr phillips is there any oh. objection to that amendment before we even discuss, I will I will cover the cost, so they will they will be party, party cost neutral. All right, I'm making a note. To send you a bill. Um, <laughs> is there any objection to that amendment? I have a question, but I object until I get an answer. I just want to be clear that we're talking about giving five hundred dollars to an individual person, not to an affiliate. The motion, as it said, would be to authorize up to $500 for prizes. That could be $500 for one individual. That could be spending money on plaques and trophies up to an amount of $500. That's at least how I read it. And so I think the actual prize has not yet been determined, but I'm happy to be corrected on that. If Actually, if I could... Mr. Mullman, this is well, your... Uh, the current discussion is that there's going to be three groups... Uh, of prizes, one will be for uh, adult, one will be for affiliate, and one will be for youth. Uh, so there will be three first place prizes. Okay. Ms. Bill, you, is that an answer? It is an answer. Thank right. you. Thank you. Is there objection to Mr. Mullman's motion? Going once, going twice. The amendment is adopted. We're back to the main motion. I have um, Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips, you're still muted. I'm sorry. I have my I, I, I was my hand was up to speak on the previous. I forgot right. to lower it. So you'll. 
Uh, no one's hand is up. Is anyone else wishing to speak on this item or have any questions? Seeing none, the question is automatically called. Madam Secretary, when you're ready to call the roll. One moment. So it would be Mr. Longstress motion as amended? Yes. Okay, I just need to copy over my template. Just one sec. Okay, Ms. Bill Yu. Yes. Mr. Coburn. Yes. Ms. Epke. Yes. Mr. Hagen. Yes. I will vote yes. Mr. Fiera. Yes. Ms. Hogarth. Yes. Mr. Longstreth. Yes. Mr. Molman. Yes. Mr. Hall. Yes. Mr. Nicola. Yes. Mr. Phillips. Yes. Mr. Radsep. Yes. Ms. Sarwark. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Lucini. Yes. Mr. Chair, it is 16 to 0 to 0. Oh, yes. 17 to 0 to 0. I think that's adopted. Uh, is there a committee that needs to be populated on this, or is it kind of ad hoc? Mr. Chair, I would propose that it's probably best ad hoc, and I'd be willing to work with Mr. Fishman on this in the next couple of days to see about whatever he needs to, to get this ball rolling. Uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll work with uh, some of the authors to come up with uh, prizes and, and the finer details uh, and, and help do that myself, if that's okay. I am amenable to that if everybody else is amenable to that. All righty. Um, the remaining item is an executive session item. Um, is there any objection to doing announcements and public comment, or at least doing public comment before we proceed to that? Because then we kick the public out and rather than have people have to come back in to do public comment. Seeing no objection, why don't we do that? Does any member of the gallery wish to address the LNC? Oh, well, all righty. Um, all right. I move to go into executive session for political strategy purposes, including all LNC members and uh, st any staffers. Second. Second. Second by Ms. Ebke. Is there objection? Hearing no objection, we'll move to executive session. Thank you all the members of the public that joined us. Mr. Chair, in the instance of expediency, would you like me to remove some of the people who are not LNC members? Yes, please. Thank you. And might we take five minutes? We could do that. Why don't we do a five minutes while Mr. Fishman does that? We'll come back at nine. 